uh, to four times higher energy consumption happen uh, when you embedded ZLD uh, with a standard wastewater treatment plant. So just go through this and what I have done here that I have taken a practical example that one effluent which may be nearly one MLD, 1000 KLD means one MLD uh, wastewater that get treated and ZLD is achieved. So you can see that first uh, maybe ETP biological treatment is there, then there is a reverse osmosis system and from the reject of reverse osmosis that get treated through ME and uh, we utilize the permit RO water in cooling tower and by this way normally industry used to achieve the zero liquid discharge. And see the operating cost. The operating cost to just operate the conventional biological treatment is nearly 7 US dollar per cubic meter. And then at tertiary stage, UFRO, that cost comes around 2 USD per cubic meter. And the reject which go and you have to treat into multi-effect evaporator, ME cost comes nearly 42 US dollar per cubic meter. So when you combined all the technique and when you divide into the inlet effluent per cubic meter treatment cost, then the combined cost will come nearly 20 to 21 US dollar per cubic meter when we achieve the ZLD. So here what I want to say that suppose if you have some good stream available where you can discharge the treated effluent and you have to just meet the discharge norm, then you have to just adopt ETP with biological treatment and no need to adopt the ZLD. Then your cost of treatment will be nearly three times lesser than the cost of ZLD. And similarly, power consumption, you can see that how power consumption is associated with ME very high, nearly 30 kilowatt hour per cubic meter with UFRO 5 kilowatt hour per cubic meter and ETP 3 kilowatt hour per cubic meter. So uh, in power consumption also, if you adopt ZLD, then the power consumption will be four times higher than the normal uh, uh, energy which going in conventional system and uh, so the energy is directly proportional to CO2 emission. So we can say that CO2 emission to meet ZLD is four times higher to meet the discharge norm. So here the uh, lesson from this slide we able to learn is this that uh, don't adopt ZLD if it is not necessarily required. Normally, we used to recommend ZLD when you don't have proper disposal system and very scarcity of water is there, then yes, ZLD can be implemented. But uh, also note that when we implement the ZLD technique, then we end with higher energy consumption and then we end with higher carbon emission in the environment and uh, it cannot be uh, uh, considered as a environment friendly technology. So, so that is the main thing I want to explain through this slide. I don't know, I have used a lot of data and uh, so it is a confusing or clear that I don't know. But maybe after my talk, if anyone have any confusion or any clarity want, you can ask a question and, and then I can clarify in a better way. This is the uh, slide where uh, I want to share about the water cost. Normally, uh, the people say that we are adopting ZLD because of water scarcity. But uh, what uh, my experience is that as far as water consumption in industry is concerned, we have a part of supply water. If supply water is available, then it's very good. But if not available, then we have broadly 
four kind of sources. One is you do the ZLD and you recovered almost all water and use inside industry. Second option is if your industry is nearly seashore, then you can have a desalinated water. The third option is we can take the sewage water, the treated sewage from the city can be taken and further treated inside the industry and that, that can be utilized as a industrial water. And the last choice is the rainwater, but the rainwater is not always available. It is a seasonal, but in that particular season, we can utilize the rainwater also. You can see here the cost. If you implementing ZLD and throw ZLD, if you are recovering the water, then it is going to cost between 15 to 21 dollar per cubic meter. And if you have a desalinated water, uh, sea water, and there you have put a desalination plant, and if you are getting industrial water from there, then it may cost between 0.7 to 1 dollar per cubic meter. If you are going to recover the sewage water and that water get utilized inside industry, then between 0.4 to 0.5 dollar per cubic meter cost. And the rainwater, uh, if you are utilizing, then a very small treatment is required because normally the rainwater happens to be pure form and only we end with 0.15 dollar per cubic meter. So what here I want to explain that if you need the industrial water, then our first choice is not the ZLD water. Our first choice is a rainwater, then sewage water can be utilized and then desalinated water. And that will be the best water source, techno-economic source as compared to ZLD. And, and this I have shown uh, to just prove my earlier slide that uh, why we are not recommending in favor of ZLD. Now I think uh, I, let me share uh, some of uh, my uh, uh, related to my book. Uh, recently uh, I have published one book that uh, title is Wastewater Treatment Technologies Design Considerations. And this book has been published this month by Ville Publication. And uh, the main content in this book I have covered, I have divided this book into uh, seven chapters. One is, uh, first chapter is Global Perspective of Wastewater Treatment. Second chapter uh, contain wastewater characteristics. Third is wastewater treatment technologies. Fourth design considerations. Fifth advanced sustainable wastewater treatment technologies. Sixth zero liquid discharge. And the last chapter uh, cover wastewater treatment plant of. So uh, actually there are several wastewater treatment uh, uh, books available and uh, then what was the necessity for me to write? Actually uh, I am in industry and uh, normally the professors who happens to be in university college, they used to write the books and the industry people don't get much more time uh, and because of busy schedule, we don't able to write. But why uh, I have written this book? Because of one reason. That is the, I have tried to put in this book practical aspect of the wastewater treatment. In last uh, 24 to 25 year, uh, I have uh, instrumental and getting design and installed, I think more than 100 wastewater treatment plant in several industry and uh, around the globe. Uh, I don't think there are any con continent where uh, our designed wastewater treatment plant is not in operation. So everywhere it is there. Uh, so uh, in last 24, 25 year, uh, what I found uh, the practical data, those has been uh, tabulated and presented in this book in various chapters such that people can get the practical data 
and it will be very useful for the designer to design the wastewater treatment plant and it will be very good for the operator to operate the wastewater treatment plant and if you see the first chapter then first chapter global perspective of wastewater treatment i have covered the global scenario of uh, wastewater treatment i have also covered that what kind of technology trend is going on and i have also covered that how we can embed the sustainability in wastewater treatment then the second chapter wastewater characteristics this is very useful chapter and in this chapter i have covered nearly 30 kind of industry affluent characteristics so when uh, any designer go on designing the wastewater treatment then the first problem they encountered that what will be the characteristics of particular industry so there i have tried to tabulate practical and the very perfect characteristics of more than 30 industry and those has been tabulated and i feel it will be very useful for those people who used to design the wastewater treatment then third cover wastewater treatment technology so all the commercially available and the sustainable technologies has been covered fourth chapter is design consideration so fourth chapter is the main heart of this book where all the design methodologies are there and uh, a simple person can also able to design the wastewater treatment plant that my effort happens to be in this book so all the simple formula design methodology of various kind of uh, treatment technologies has been covered in chapter 4 then in chapter 5 i have covered advanced sustainable wastewater treatment technology like uh, forward osmosis a scale ban volut which is not available in any kind of textbook at this moment of time so those all detail has been covered in fifth chapter six is fully devoted to zero liquid discharge and also the techno economic analysis has been presented um, regarding the zero liquid discharge and the last seven chapter is Uh, cover uh, operational excellence so it is very useful for the operator uh, to operate the plant so this is about uh, my latest book and uh, if you see the availability then it's available on various e-commerce site uh, on uh, online vile library uh, this is the online site from where uh, you can get this book uh, on amazon Uh, amazon also uh, this is available and this is the site from where this book can be ordered a part of this various e-commerce site like ebay red self booktopia lehmans water stones and several e-commerce site vile has already put th this book and if anyone interested from there he can order so that about uh, my presentation uh, related to embedding sustainable green technology into wastewater management and uh, now i shall conclude my presentation and let's have a um, question and answer hello yes so you are mute ajay uh, you are muted professor ajay you have to unmute ah your your voice is not coming professor ajay all right can you hear me now yes 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 now it's coming uh, good i think uh, but my voice was coming when i was doing the presentation it is being recorded so everything is uh,
Yes, so everything is like now in our order. Thank you very much for uh, giving such a nice presentation. And uh, uh, the, for you, I think uh, you don't need any introduction. Your name is itself a, a brand in the wastewater treatment technology and how you represented uh, yourself in different uh, um, you know, companies. So I'm going to take a little bit time just to introduce you because we missed in the in the in that sections. Um, uh, but uh, I also uh, ask uh, my invitee, my uh, uh, you know participants to also uh, you know uh, have backup questions for you if they want to you know uh, you know uh, because this is the platform how you can uh, interact with you. Um, the last time when I invited you, you had uh, very little time, but this is time actually at least you have uh, uh, blessed us with your uh, ample amount of time. So uh, those things are quite, quite important in terms of uh, like uh, um, having uh, the understanding and uh, that's how actually the, the, the whole process works. Uh, the way you have explained uh, the whole thing uh, I think uh, that is the that is the way um, anybody can take it, um, and uh, and I just want to you know take uh, an opportunity you know to thank you for uh, you know providing a bit uh, brief uh, information, and uh, those things are quite important. So if I have to talk about your educational background, um, you have done. Uh, your uh, basic education to the higher degree education in India, um, uh, which is uh, in IIT Delhi, the PhD, where you have also uh, secured there. And after that, like you are involved uh, uh, with uh, many of the organization, um, uh, especially the wastewater treatment, uh, you know, plant. Uh, but then after, I also see yourself that. Uh, you have represented yourself in the cell Unilever and other kind of environmental, uh, you know, organization. Obviously, you are sitting, uh, you know, with the many editorial board publication. You have made it. What you have just now, you know, you know, briefed. So whatever I am trying to, you know, brief a little bit today is it's 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 it's, it's just a small introduction for you, but you have. Uh, close to Silver Jubilee, you know, like around 25 uh, years of experience and provided your, uh, you know, um, you know, your experience to the, to the, to the various uh, uh, stakeholder in this uh, uh, wastewater treatment technology. So, um, and I am very, very thankful as a Academy um, of uh, Nanotechnology and Wastewater uh, Innovations. And I by the IEEE Nanotechnology Council South Africa chapter and IEEE uh, that you have uh, you know given a very good insight. Uh, let me open the floor for the, the for the uh, for the audience to uh, interact with you, and then we can take uh, you know things uh, more you know further. So um, can you raise your hand so that we can. We can uh, connect you uh, with uh, Dr. Chaube. This is your real opportunities, uh, colleagues and friends, that you can straight away interact with him, uh, and then, then he will be very happy to uh, provide uh, some some so, something uh, which can be beneficial to all of us. So the floor is open. Yes, what you can do, I you can just. I will but, wait uh, to can... answer if anyone have any question or any clarity want. Um, right. um, uh, I am sure like, you know, the, the, the questions is uh, on the way, uh, but before they start, I just want to take the opportunity to, to ask you, although I chat with you a lot, uh, but uh, I uh, wish to ask you like, you know, uh, this treatment technology, uh, what is applicable at this moment? And I think your book is also very good, uh, 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 going to be, I think, very, very good uh, uh, platform just for everybody to, uh, to, to locate in terms of, uh, um, you know, like uh, finding some solution. 
my question is like how much uh, bulk uh, waste and what kind of waste actually um, with your experience is finding the solution and what are the technology is going to be you know a little bit uh, quite helpful so uh, uh, waste means uh, you your is waste water or uh, solid waste yeah sorry carry on so waste means waste water or solid waste um i uh, categorically i mean to say waste water thank you right right so uh, uh, waste water uh, i don't able to understand the perfect question what, what question is yours if uh, there is a waste water already um, how much uh, the bulk way in terms of the industrial solution because most of us is in the laboratory scale like in the university working in the laboratory scale but if we have to talk about industrial scale this is uh, i think uh, connecting view so in that regard i wanted to find out like uh, uh, your your uh, some you can throw some light on that so actually uh, what i have explained right now it is related to the uh larger waste water treatment plant itself and uh, there is a difference between the a smaller quantity waste water treatment and also when the waste water we get in the bulk and uh, uh, the waste water treatment technology which i have covered in my presentation uh, activated sludge process or mbbr and then volute for the sludge handling oh radical forward osmosis those all are for the larger waste water treatment plant which normally in industry we use to install if you see the industrial waste water treatment plant so it may start as a small as 50 kld and may be 2 mld 3 mld kind of effluent also come so in that range the technology which i have presented in my presentation is useful now coming to the laboratory scale uh, actually uh, in industry also we first do the uh, all our testing and piloting at a smaller scale basically in laboratory so if you see the our experience at upl then we have green cell and in green cell two laboratories are there and whenever the new technology comes then first we work at laboratory scale and we try to figure out the feasibility on our effluent the new technology and once it is a feasible at laboratory scale then we move to piloting scale so slightly higher capacity inside field we used to implement and once we found feasible and good at piloting a stage then the third stage we go on implementation of larger uh, waste water treatment plant so that's how we work inside the industry thank you very much i think um, this is this is a very very uh, you know a uh, good response the way i was looking um, you know to understand because uh, as the, as i said in the university uh, it's it's a completely uh, different approach than what we are going to have on the practical side um okay so now i see there is from some few questions is uh, the hands are up so i think uh, prab shivani you want to go ahead for your question please go ahead thank you for this opportunity first i would like to thank uh, dr chobe for his uh, wonderful presentation so um, i have been working closely with uh, escom which is uh, a power generation company and uh, i'm glad that one of uh, the company's staff uh, mr tamane is with us and he's hearing uh, the your lecture um 
I've been closely working uh, uh, on some projects uh, where we found that uh, the quality of water which we use to generate power, you know, uh, we need to do the pretreatment, I think, because it affects the overall power generation, you know. Um, uh, the, the, the raw water contains, the cooling water contains many different organics, which has an impact on on uh, the power generation, over overall power generation. So what would be your uh, comment or what would, would be your suggestion that what kind of treatment or pre-treatment a power company should look into to treat water so that, you know, it should not form scales, you know, perhaps you might have heard about the scaling problem. So what would be what would be your suggestion to to the power companies uh, across the world, including South Africa, so that you know uh, we can overcome uh, the, the 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 cost of of power generation and uh, how better we can utilize this water, or what are the pre treatment or pre treatment methods we can think of? Thank you. Okay, so thank you. I think uh, you have raised a very uh, good, genuine and practical question. And uh, I feel that uh, a lot of power companies are there nearby Johannesburg. And uh, Johannesburg is under water scarce location. And uh, in water scarce location, uh, we should use water very carefully. Now coming to the power plant. In power plant, what I feel, first of all, it is a high water consuming industry. Whenever we say power plant, then it consume very huge amount of water. And if that power plant is water scarce location, especially in South Africa, Johannesburg, or nearby Johannesburg, then we should be very careful. Now coming to the point of power plant, the maximum uh, water goes on uh, con get consumed in cooling tower. And if you see cooling tower, then they required certain quality of water. And because of a scaling of a condenser or heat exchanger, we required good quality of water and then we do the blowdown. Now, I have mentioned in my presentation one technology, green technology, a scale van. A scale van is a very good technology which can reduce the water consumption in power plant. And uh, we, we have seen, uh, I have seen not only in our industry, but several power plant also that now people are using a scale van. A scale van is a technology where even though your raw water is not a good quality, suppose some organic is there, some TDS is there, then also no need to do the pretreatment. You can directly pass through the scale van and you can recycle the water as high as up to 2,50,000 ppm TDS. So you can see a huge reduction of abstracted water demand because the blow down will be very, very minimum. I think if you don't have a scale van, then first uh, you have to uh, do the treatment of raw water. There a lot of cost will incurred and a lot of energy will get consumed. And then that treated water when you use in cooling tower in power plant, then you can only circulate maximum up to 300 or 400 ppm TDS, then again you have to do the blowdown of entire wastewater. When you uh, adopt the scale van technique, then first advantage is this, that uh, no use of pretreatment. Uh, and second advantage is that you can recycle the same water up to 2,50,000 ppm, so very less blowdown happen. So I feel that for cooling uh, power plant, especially in cooling tower, which is a very high water consuming place, 
we can adopt a, a green sustainable technology a scale van and uh, that will be a solution so that is the one thing second thing suppose a scale van technique is not there then we have to concentrate on the characteristics of raw water and uh, if you have only organic impurities and no other uh, impurities uh, then you have to adopt uh, maybe the aeration technique or some kind of uh, uh, you can pass through the uh, uh, ultra filtration then it will be very good treated water available and uh, if some other impurities are there then we have to check because there are so many treatment technology and all the applicability depend upon the exact characteristics of raw water so that we need to see and then it can be recommended but i think the my suggestion uh, in this presentation is this that in power plant let's adopt and implement a scale van because that i feel a best technique to reduce the water demand thank you so much sir i think i have initiated one thought process uh, in 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 my colleague so perhaps maybe uh, he would like to ask some more questions Good. something thank you very much for your answer thank you thank you so much uh, professor shivani and now i see there is a hand from baron baron uh, go ahead and shoot your question I think Barun, you unmute your because you are muted. No voice is coming. Yes, Barun, can you unmute? It is, it is audible, sir. Yes, yes. Yes. Now audible. Sir, I uh, thank you very much, sir. I am very much fan of your thought process, your uh, carry forwards or the waste water water treatment. Sir, uh, uh, my, my questions is based on the some hollow fibers forward osmosis technology. So I need to know about if you can uh, treat uh, with uh, forward nano filtration technology, so that overall uh, concentrations of TDS can be minimized, consumption of minimized. What is your thought process on this, sir? So uh, hello fiber RO, you are talking, or you want to talk on the forward osmosis because both technique get applied at the different conditions. So, so what is your question? Your question is for FO forward osmosis or for RO? It is forward nano nano filtration. Forward nano filtration. If okay. you can generate so that draw solutions, in my opinion, forward osmosis needs some draw solutions and it needs some high TDS water to operate it. If you can use forward nano filtrations uh, so that TDS uh, draw solutions TDS can be less compared to uh, forward osmosis. Right. Because, so I want to know about your uh, suggestions uh, uh, on this. No, you, you are right that uh, if uh, forward nano filtration will be not there in FO, then drawdown solution which used uh, that will be costly and operation will be costly. And if we implement the nano filtration in between, then the it, it will be a optimum solution cost effective solution so nowadays in every forward osmosis people are embedding this technique um, um, but here one catch is there catch is that what is the characteristics of your effluent which you want to treat with fo uh, suppose your uh, uh, organics means in terms of COD, if I say COD is uh, less than uh, 2000 ppm, 3000 ppm, then fine. This nano filtration, when you will adopt, it will work. But if the COD is higher than 3000 ppm, then the nano filtration get chalked and then we get very difficult to achieve result then only drawdown solution is the solution for the forward osmosis. Uh, sir, I am, I am uh, talking for the process applications like some uh, nutraceuticals product recovery, where there is no TDS, uh, TDS level is very less. There means you have to uh, concentrate the product in one streams. 
so their why forward osmosis they, they then i think the only ro will work and i i either ro or elon nano filtration normally in nano filtration what our experience is that power consumption is very less so in that way nano filtration is a environment friendly technology but if you see the implementation cost capital cost then nano filtration cost is higher than reverse osmosis but the disadvantage with reverse osmosis is the energy consumption happens to be very high so i think we have to see that uh, what kind of uh, that process uh, water characteristics is but uh, in uh, nano filtration one disadvantage is there that it can remove only uh, cationic uh, uh, dissolved salt the anionic dissolved salt will pass through the nano filtration whereas if you put the ro then all the cationic and anionic all the dissolved salt will get removed thank you thanks a lot sir thanks a lot thank you varun uh, for your uh, good interaction i hope you are fine and uh, you had a good uh, you know uh, resolution of your query uh, you can unmute uh, you can hand uh, uh, your down and then uh, uh, can i invite uh, more people because uh, we are still um, like uh, ahead of time <laughs> uh, i think uh, i i am sorry to say it's like uh, behind uh, time but uh, still uh, i'm thankful to dr jobe like uh, he is still you know you know blessing with his presence so obviously like uh, if there is any things uh, you can still uh, put forward sit so i can still see you are there so you want to shoot any question Oh, I'm covered, uh, 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 Prof. Uh, it has been a clear explanation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chitso. Um, uh, we are we are so glad to hear that. Um, Manisha Di, you are also there. You want to also make any comments? Thank you, Professor, for a very informative talk. Um, it was very. Uh, thought provoking thank you uh thank you very much uh, di uh, i think uh, that is very very uh, nice this is the first uh, lecture we have organized and i think uh, thanks for connecting uh, to our academy which is academy of nanotechnology and uh, wastewater innovation uh, together supported with the ieee and the ieee nanotechnology um, you know uh, council south africa chapter so sir with that note i have to i have just a little bit formality to do where i am going to ask uh, prof shivani to give you a vote of thanks and then we will ask your uh, uh, you know opinion and uh, way forward and then we will have the closing remark by me uh, thank you again sir uh, this was one of the very insightful talk uh, i would say Uh, for all the researchers across the world uh, it is it is very much uh, interesting to know that whatever we are doing uh, we have to do more than that we have to open up our minds uh, for uh, actually thinking what we are doing because uh, as an academician i think uh, it's more important that the 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 research should have an impact on 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 Uh, the society and the community and uh, together only we can look out for the green technologies and the sustainable systems for the future uh, it is very much needed at the moment that we look into this uh, type of technologies what you have been talking about in your talk and uh, telling us the do's and don'ts of uh, using uh wastewater technologies it is also equally important for every industry to carefully think uh, about uh, the different types of technologies they can uh, they can use for their treatment purposes because i believe that each industry has their own parameters and their own uh, you know uh, installments 
uh, installations for for uh, using water at different stages of manufacturing or production and all and uh, even the discharge of these uh, wastewater uh, the parameters are so much different from one industry to uh, next industry. So I think uh, your talk has given uh, us uh, given us an idea to think that whenever we have to think about any technology, wastewater technology, we have to first look into what type of wastewater treatment we should be doing and how uh, we can embed the sustainable green technology in what section of, of the, the treatment. So I think it is it is very, very interesting talk what we have learned today and I, I really wish to thank you for your time uh, and on behalf of the panel and on behalf of the organizer uh, that you have you are spending time and you are uh, answering the queries here. So I think in coming days we would be really very happy that this uh, uh, collaboration with you uh, uh, the Academy's collaboration and IEEE's collaboration with you actually be, ve be very fruitful in future and we will be more productive working together. So I think uh, with those uh, few words, I would I wish to thank you once again for your time. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. I think uh, thank you from my side and this was a very good interactive session and i think uh, at end of this presentation i can only share that if we look at the stg sustainable development goal and uh, i feel that uh, out of 17 stg the maximum stg we can achieve only if we concentrate on the green sustainable technology and green sustainable technologies are not only means for the wastewater management in all the process, manufacturing, even in the transportation, everywhere the requirement is. And if we focus on the green sustainable technology, then we can achieve uh, our SDG goal. And, and this is the important uh, step to achieve the 17 SDGs. Second thing is the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. If we want to achieve the goal of Paris Agreement, then there is no other alternative but to think about the green sustainable technology. Because without green sustainable technology, we cannot uh, uh, think to achieve the uh, Paris Agreement on Climate Change. So I think with this note that uh, we have to focus more on more on the sustainable green technology and not only in wastewater management. Wastewater management is my field, so I have given some example that how we are embedding sustainable green technology in wastewater management. But I think in all the field it's required and uh, these kind of talk need to get organized which uh, always throw some light and the people able to know each other technical technological know how sometimes also we get a lot of input from the audience that what kind of problem they are getting so i think uh, it, it's very good thing where this kind of uh, mutual interactive session go on organized i think thanks to uh, professor ajay kumar misra and also thanks to uh, uh, Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers for organizing this informative talk. Thank you. Um, thank you, um, thank so, you much. so much. Um, now it gives. So I think you are muted. Ah, now it's okay. Yes, um, thank you 
so much again once again and uh, i can see like i had a lot of technological challenges you know so uh, this was all disrupted so uh, my accept my apology for that i think like uh, we learn now and we are learning uh, many things so that's how actually things are going and i have seen this despite challenges or uh, uh, the correct incorrect link actually we got like close to 25 participants uh, today and i think uh, most of them really enjoyed i as you have interacted with some question answer as well with your permission i will um, i will avail this recording whatever i have managed to record it and then uh, again with your permission i can uh, i'm going to put a youtube channel where i'm going to put it there so that obviously maximum people should be you know enjoy because uh, the, the 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 recording is quite uh, longer time it will be quite uh, difficult to you know you know so that way so uh, those are my you know uh, thoughts on that way and that's how i want to just close uh, today's meeting and i wish to you know say thank you so much and we will be very much blessed again to have you in the coming session because i'm sure all the audience and the participants are quite uh, um you know you know enthusiastic and they might be having uh, more queries in uh, you know uh, very very soon actually so thank you once again thank you once again and bye bye for now thank you thank you bye